All right, folks, we're in the town of Fanning, Texas. This is the uh, Fanning Battleground. We're going to get in there and uh, see what it's all about. Hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell to be alerted when our latest videos are posted. The Battle of Coletto, also known as the Battle of Coletto Creek, was fought on March 19th and 20th, 1836, during the Goliad Campaign of the Texas Revolution. In February, Mexican General Jose de Ura led a branch of the Mexican Army up the Gulf Coast of Mexican, Texas, toward Goliad, where a large contingent of soldiers from the Texan Army were garrisoned under Colonel James W. Fannin. At the same time, Mexican President Santa Ana led a larger force into the Texas interior, where on March 6th, his troops won the Battle of the Alamo. After word spread that the Alamo had fallen, Texas commander Samuel Houston, fearing another disaster would befall the Texan army, he ordered Colonel James Fannin to destroy the Basidia La Bahia and retreat to Victoria, Texas, some 30 miles to the northeast. Fannin and his men had been fortifying the Presidio, which Fannin called Fort Defiance from possible Mexican attack. Fannin received the orders on March 14, 1836, which stated, the immediate advance of the enemy may be confidently expected. Prompt movements are therefore highly important, but for whatever reasons, he failed to act immediately. Whether indecisive, stubborn, or loyal to the soldiers away on mission, Fannin remained in Goliad until the morning of March 19th. Finally, Fannin led his some 400 men away from Goliad, transporting nine cannon, more than 500 spare muskets, and loads of heavy supplies and baggage. But it would be too late for he and his troops. Herrera's advanced riders had already spotted the Texan troops, and the main army was just about two hours behind. After the column had traveled about nine miles, Fannin ordered a halt to rest the animals. At about 3 p.m., the Mexican cavalry appeared, and the Texans tried to reach a grove of timber some 400 yards away. But as the Mexican force grew closer, the withdrawing Texas contingents formed a defensive square with their wagons and placed their cannons in each corner. General Urea's forces then attacked. Bitter fighting immediately ensued as Fannin's volunteers hurled back the assaults of the Mexican force. Although Mexican troops launched three separate attacks against the square, they could not penetrate the Texas position. However, as night fell, Mexican sharpshooters were able to wound and kill many of the Texans, whose view of the Mexicans was impaired due to the high grass of the prairie. After a fierce battle, the Mexicans suffered about 100 to 200 killed and wounded, while the Texan losses were 7 to 9 killed and 60 wounded. One of them was Colonel Fannin. On the following day, faced with several times their number, Fannin and his officers drafted terms of surrender, which included statements that the Texan wounded would be treated and that they would all gain the protection expected as prisoners of war, and that they would be paroled to the United States of America. However, Santa Ana had stated earlier that any Texans could be allowed to surrender unconditionally. So General Herrera could not guarantee that the terms would be followed by Santa Ana, but stated that he would talk to Santa Ana on behalf of the terms of surrender presented by the Texans. As a result of the signing, the Battle of Coletto ended. After the surrender, those that could walk were sent to Goliad under Mexican escort. Those that were wounded were transported. Fannin arrived in Goliad on March 22nd. In the meantime, General Herrera moved on to Victoria, where he wrote a letter to Santa Ana, recommended that the prisoners should be treated with clemency. However, Santa Ana did not agree, as he had received authorization from the Mexican Congress to treat all captured troops as pirates rather than prisoners of war. Once the Texian troops had all arrived in Goliad, Santa Ana ordered the execution of the prisoners. 
The Mexicans spared 20 physicians, orderlies, and interpreters, and another 28 prisoners were able to escape. Then on Palm Sunday, March 27, 1836, Fannin and about 340 other Texian prisoners were divided into four groups. While the sick and the wounded remained in the chapel, the other three groups were escorted on different roads out of town, and when each group was about a half mile from the fort, the Mexican guards opened fire. Then the Mexicans executed the wounded who were held in the chapel. The last soldier to die was the injured Colonel James Fannin. His three dying wishes were to be shot in the chest, given a Christian burial, and have his watch sent to his family. Instead, the Mexican commanding officer shot Fannin in the face, burned his body with the others, and kept the timepiece as a war prize. Deemed a massacre, the execution of Fannin's command served to inflame the Texas cause. And when Texan forces attacked Santa Ana's command on April 21st, 1836, the battle cry rang out, remember the Alamo, remember Goliad. The war ended that April day when General Sam Houston defeated Santa Ana's Mexican army at the Battle of San Jacinto. A few months after the Battle of San Jacinto, Republic of Texas Army General Thomas Rusk was escorting the remnants of the Mexican army on the retreat back to Mexico. When he came through Goliad, Rusk discovered the remains of Fannin's men in the trenches where they had been burned on the ground where they had scattered by animals. Rusk immediately ordered that the remains be collected and given a proper military funeral. Fannin and his men were buried with full honors in a mass grave on June the 4th, 1836. This mass grave of Texas heroes remained unmarked for decades and was almost lost to history. Over the years, charred bone fragments and other bits of human remains would be unearthed near the site. In 1928, two acres, where these remains were often found, was purchased and given to the city of Goliad. An investigation confirmed that this was the site for the mass grave of Fannin's army. In 1936, the state of Texas appropriated money for this grand monument, which was dedicated in 1938. Today, it is a popular site for everyone interested in the Republic of Texas and the Texas War of Independence.